there's a new feature in SharePoint called Quick Steps. It's a way to add custom actions to your list that you can trigger for a particular item or the list, the whole list itself. In this video, I'm gonna break down how this thing works and when this type of thing would be useful for you. Sound pretty fun? Let's get into it. So let's break down this scenario. The purchasing department has a purchase request that they're getting in. They need an easy way to, to trigger a request approval for this particular uh, process or for, for these lists of items. What we're going to do is create a quick step that will trigger a flow for a selected item. Now, there's ways you can do this through Power Automate. There, there's some other, there's some automated ways, but in this scenario, they want to double check that all the data is there at, before they trigger the process, just so they have, they have less things to reject. So let's jump into the library. I'll show you what's going on in here, and we'll start building out this quick step. So here's the list right now. This is really the back end list. The front end is likely a form or a, a power app or some other, maybe an external system that is putting all of the data into this list. We don't have to worry about the front end. All we have to do is deal with the back end stuff, with this list itself, and then the uh, how the purchasing department will use it, which is to go through this list. So we've got our purchase request items. Where you'll find this quick step feature is under the automate menu, you'll see an option here. It, it's pretty new and it's called quick steps. You can create one or you can manage the ones that you already have. I don't have any in here. It's, a, it, it's never been used on this list. So we're gonna go straight to create a quick step and you'll see very quickly what types of things you can do with this. You can create a step for selected items or for the current, the whole list. So that's how this screen is broken down. Most of the features, as you can see, are for a selected item, which is how we want to use this, because we want to trigger uh, something for a particular purchase request. We could draft an email, which would include a link to the, the list item itself. We could start a Teams chat uh, with, with, that, with that information. We could set a value which pretty that's a pretty interesting thing. If we were to click on set a value, we get to pick the column name and what value we want. Now, JSON formatting is pretty good at this too, but JSON formatting requires a little bit more technical knowledge. This is actually end user focused, so end users could do this themselves. It's a very neat feature. What we want to do is we want to trigger a flow. We want to execute a Power Automate flow for this particular item. So we'll use this option and we can, we'll give it a name. Begin request processing because we could be doing a number of things with this information. We could be uh, calling, you know, out to a, an, an, an external system to make sure there is budget for that department for this request. Well, there's a number of things that we could be doing. Uh, it may not just be an approval, a simple approval, but a, an approval is probably gonna be part of this. The next thing we need is the flow ID. Now, I've got the flow over here. In the URL, the flow ID is the, the, the weird uh, identifier that comes after the word flows in the URL. So. You'll see that right towards the end. There's another one up here, and that's actually the environment ID. So we don't need that one. We need this right here. So we'll copy this into the clipboard, and we'll paste it into the flow ID. All we have to do now is click Create. So now we're taken into the Manage Quick Steps. Because we have one, we can toggle this on or off if we want. So if you have different ones, maybe you're testing some out, maybe some have an issue and you wanna troubleshoot the flow or whatever that is, you can just turn that off quickly. We can also click on this to be taken back in here. We can edit things or we'll be able to delete this if we wanna delete this. But for now, we have this thing running. Uh, all we have to do is test this thing. So to test this, all we have to do is select uh, one of these items. We go to the automate menu and you'll see right at the top, begin pr uh, request processing. So we don't have to go back down to quick steps. This is just to create and manage, but it's called a quick step because it's really two clicks to use this once you have it configured. You select the item, and then under the automate menu, you click begin re request processing, since that's the quick step we want to configure. 
you can have multiple uh, quick steps configured uh, uh, as you saw. So you can choose which ones you need. But this dialog brings up the the the, the run the the run flow uh, dialog. And all we have to do is click run flow. And now our flow is running on this particular list item. It's incredibly simple. And what you do in that flow is now all, all up to you. You could have any, any kind of process you would like to process this particular item the way your business needs. Now, more features are going to be coming to this quick steps. I'm sure of it uh, to stay up to date on exactly what, what things are coming when they're coming and other SharePoint news. Then check the link in the description below for my SharePoint Insights newsletter. It comes out once a week and it's just jam packed full of value. All the news that has come out in the last week with SharePoint and some Copilot stuff sprinkled in there as well. And to see a lot of other SharePoint content that has come out uh, or, or features you may not have ever heard of before, then click or tap the screen and I'll see you over there.